in domination culture, judging others is the tragic strategy that we use to try to meet needs for growth and learning. If I tell you what's wrong with you, maybe you'll fix it. Doesn't work. Does it actually soften the human and make them open and willing and safe? Yeah. Which are the things that are required for growth and learning and for awareness? Mm-hmm. No. When we lead with our judgments of wrongness to ourselves and others, we're, we're adding unnecessary pain into the relational field. And that comes from, in my opinion, and I know this is going to maybe be triggering to some people, so I apologize in advance, but the way I see it, and you can disagree, I'm going to stop qualifying. I'm just going to own it. Mm -hmm. Um, It comes from religious conditioning, a a particular kind of religious conditioning. And I want to be really clear. I'm not against spirituality. I'm not against mystical forms of religion or any of this, but there is a form and a flavor of a certain kind of religiosity. Mm-hmm. And it's all religions, they all have a version of this. It's a sort of a, maybe we could think of it as like a stage of development in religion mm-hmm. that teaches, and that many of us have internalized, that teaches that the best way to get somebody to be good is to induce suffering. That suffering is the tool that we are taught to use for learning and growth. And suffering doesn't result in learning and growth. It results in traumatized people. So if we pull back from trauma for a moment, but we can just, I I mentioned this just to kind of give a little bit of context of where some of this comes from and, and what it is, the enormity of what we're trying to change. It's all of the assumptions that we've internalized that the best way for me to tell, to get myself to be good is to remind myself how bad I am. And all that that does is that it creates a tremendous amount of inner conflict Mm -hmm. and it zaps our energy, Mm -hmm. right? So the two things, we talk about this all the time, but the two things that make relationships unsafe, and this is now, today we're talking about your relationship with yourself. Okay. And you don't, you didn't come, you're, this is honestly come by, this doesn't come out of a vacuum, right? Like you absorbed it. Like all of us did, we absorbed it. Mm -hmm. But the process of waking up is, is about being able to look at what we absorbed, understand where it came from and begin to see how so much of what we learned is a tragic strategy, a strategy that doesn't work and then ground ourselves in the needs that we're trying to meet. And the two things that make things unsafe are judgment and demand. When I'm telling you what's wrong with you and that you have to be different. So my head is full of those two things. Right. Okay. Full of those two things. I'm just like that's a lifetime of work right there. Those those, things. (laughs) Those are the two things we're gonna work on over and over and over. Mm -hmm. Is adopting a non-judgmental stance with ourselves and others, Mm -hmm. detoxing. This power over strategy of you have to, you must, you should, you're going to hell if you don't, you're a bad person if you don't, the whole reward and punishment frame, Mm -hmm. we're detoxing and we're replacing it with a rehumanizing of ourselves. We're not objects to meet other people's needs. We're not objects in a consumeristic system. We're We're subjectivities, right? We're sentient beings and so there's deep self-connection and self-compassion and self-acceptance and self-soothing and self-reclaiming and the more that we're able to do that for ourselves the more we extend that to everybody else in our lives and we become safe people for other people to be around and what makes us safe people for ourselves and other people is the continued practice of you will not be met with moralistic judgment. You will not be met with me projecting my preferences on you and then trying to change you in the image of me. This is the kind of freedom of cho- uh, freedom and choice and autonomy that helps people thrive in relationships, in real relationships, in fulfilling, energizing, inspiring, authentic, empowered, loving relationships. So this piece that you're struggling with is 
such a, it's like, um, in a way, I'm like, it's such a beautiful little practice in a way, right? Because every time you find yourself saying, oh my God, I'm such an awesome, I'm so stupid, I'm so, you know, those are moments where you have an opportunity to like rewrite the code. If you think of it as like a computer program, right? That's where you pause and you go, oh, look, there's a bug in the system. Mm -hmm. It's time for me to go, no, we're not going to do this anymore. And if you can ground yourself in, as I'm telling myself that, like stupid is an easy one. Like if I'm telling myself, oh, you're so stupid, what I'm really valuing might be um, insight or understanding or clarity or competence, you know, or awareness. And so I ground myself in what is the thing that I'm, that I'm valuing. And then I can remind myself how great I am, that I value that. 